Hey guys, Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com, ResetCharters.com. Most of you guys who are following my channel understand what this is about, but what I'm doing now is I'm working on one of my personal cars. Um, I've several cool cars and you know I do a lot of cool stuff so I want to start sharing a little of that with you guys on YouTube um, I don't know maybe it'll help you guys I know that when I was looking for this video I'm about to shoot on the internet I couldn't find any quality information so I'm about to start working on my 1980 C3 Corvette I've done a lot of work to the engine, I'm about to have a lot of work to the drive drivetrain. I had a couple other cars I've been working on for a while that are almost to the point where I can switch some attention to the Corvette, but the video I'm gonna shoot today is um, my power door locks didn't work properly. Now, I, the switch would work one way, but not the other way. I didn't know anything about this. I've never had to deal with this before, so I did a little bit of investigating. I pulled the door panel off. I had my mechanic in there working it out. He's pretty busy. Anyway, long story short, I'm sick and tired of paying these crazy hourly wait, uh, rates to, for these shops. So I'm going to do a little bit more on my own, which I generally do, but I'm not, I don't have a lot of time is the problem, which is where a shop really comes into play. But with the winter coming, I'm going to try to take on a few projects to get them out of the way. This one being one, hopefully I'll get this knocked out today. So the door locks on these things, the um, connectors, they go bad. They start to fall apart with the heat and that kind of thing. Now the car is um, 38 years old. So yeah, 38, no, 20, 30, yeah, 38 years old. So it's time to replace some parts. So I did some research on where to buy. I've been getting all my parts from CorvetteMods.com. Eckler's Corvette and I think that's it those are the only places I've been I, I deal with Dixie Monte Carlo and a couple other places for the El Camino and my 85 C10 I've been dealing with um, a1 auto for some parts for the C10 and then uh, I got a good deal on some stuff from LMC truck actually for the truck so anyway I ordered these parts at Eckler's Corvette uh, they're out of Titusville here in Florida. Uh, the shipping was a little bit crazy in my opinion. I paid $12 for these two connectors to be shipped. Not a fan of that. Um, especially when they came from Titusville, Florida, which is about three hours away from here. So, um, and they shipped it super cheap. So I know they made some money on the shipping, which again, not a fan, but if you can't get it anywhere else, you got to go to where you can get it, and that's where I did. So this one right here, power door lock switch repair. I actually bought the switches thinking it was that, but when I pulled the door panel off, which you can see, um, I realized really fast that the connector was bad. You can see this blue wire right here um, completely fell off of the connector so i was going to try to fix it i probably could have done a decent job fixing it myself this is the cover that went on there but i figured why jerry rig it when i can just spend a few bucks and get the right stuff and fix it properly so um this is where we're at i spent 55 dollars after shipping on these two little pieces kind of a lot but it is what it is uh one's a left and one's a right. So this one says right. And this one, just to confirm, says left. So this would be the right one. And that's what we're going to start with. All right. So notice I've got my uh, little test light in there. I didn't bother with any of that. And the reality is you should pull the negative on your battery before you start to work on any of this and guys tackle all this at your own risk um, I am NOT a mechanic I'm a do-it-yourself kind of guy and I like to tinker with my autos like I said I have multiple vehicles and this C3 Corvette I'm also when I pull this one off I'm gonna replace this door handle because the spring sags and I already ordered the handle so I have it 
Um, in these Corvettes, the battery is right here. So before I start working on anything electrical, I'm going to go ahead and pull the, uh, the negative on the battery so that there's no ground going through the car and uh, it'll be a little safer. Then I'm gonna get you uh, mounted on the tripod and I'm literally just gonna go into replacing this. Look, what needs to be done is I'm gonna have to cut these wires because they go all the way into the uh, wire loom in there. I'm not gonna bother with that. So I'm gonna cut these uh, exactly how they are and then I'm gonna use the same ground location as the factory. Um, this is the new switch. Uh, the old switch is still on there. Um, I don't have an issue with putting on the new stuff. Uh, it should be a good quality part and we're going to see. And while I have it apart, I'm going to go ahead and replace the switch. Uh, I will keep the originals because I don't believe the switch to be the culprit of the issue. Obviously, there's an issue with the wiring, which I'm going to remedy. So... Let me go pull the negative on the battery and then I'll get you set up on the tripod and we'll start swapping that wiring situation out. Okay, so I'm uh, just getting set up over here. You probably can't see from that angle and I'll move the uh, camera in a minute after I get done talking to you about this. So anyway, uh, Eckler's uh, Corvette is where I got these pieces from. And I showed already, but this is the package. Um, the factory pieces are black. See that? This is the back I pulled off of it. And then these aftermarket ones are white. Now, I know what most of you guys are going to say. You should solder the wires and this and that and whatever. Well, I agree that that's a more permanent solution and that it's better and all of that. So now we can stop dealing with your opinion and we can go straight into what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use some marine insulated connectors that I get on Amazon. I'm huge into car audio, boat audio, all of that. So I have a nice system on my boat, uh, systems on my jet skis, uh, and I use the same connectors for everything. Um, if it can, with if it can withstand salt water environment, it can hold up to your average every everyday environment. And um, I have never, I've maybe had a handful of problems in my whole life with a crimp connector. When you pay attention to make sure that the connection has been made every single time and test, test and retest, test with your test light, test with your voltmeter, all of that. Uh, I haven't had many problems and I don't believe that it's a bad way to make a connection. So, with that said, soldering, soldering, yes, is better. I'm not gonna do that. I don't, I don't feel like, I, I, I don't feel like this is a bad option. That's the bottom line. So, with these connectors, these little uh, uh, couplers, you stick the wire in and then you crimp one side then you do the same with the other side and then I'm going to use this torch right here to uh, basically melt the heat shrink side around so that it's a um, a sealed connection so with that said I'm going to grab the part if I can find it there you go and they give you some directions it says for so we're just going to skip the 478 to 79 and uh, deal with the 80 to 82 corvettes because this one is an 80 it says the pigtail wire colors are the same as that on your harness okay so i've got a blue wire i've got an orange wire and see if i can zoom you in There we go. So I've got a blue wire and I've got an orange wire, which you can see the blue wire is the one that fell off right here and then the orange one is still connected. Then I've got three black wires. Three black wires here. Horrible with my uh, focus today. 
So what I'm going to do is try to match it up where it looks the same to me. So this top side would have been the connector piece that I took off. So this will pop right off. I'm not going to bother with that because all I need to do with this thing. So these two are the ground, which is right here. So I'm, I am going to pull that ground out and use the exact same location. Um, I'm going to make sure there's no corrosion on it. I'm going to make sure that it is bare metal to metal because you know the, the, um, the exterior skins on a Corvette are all fiberglass, but the inside is metal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this piece off the door just like that. And take off this factory tape that is falling apart. So I can get you down a little bit more. There we go. Take off this tape so I can access more of the wiring. But I don't want this to fall apart because I want to make sure I put everything in the right spot when I splice. So there's no cuts down at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the blue wire and the orange wire right there. I'm going to do that with my uh, Klein crimping tool. Okay. So I'm going to cut it here. Then I'm going to use my wire strippers here. I'm going to go ahead and splice them one at a time. So this, these crimpers are going to take the edge right there off the wire where I can use one of my butt connectors or whatever you want to call them. And when you do this, just make sure that you've got metal on metal. And what I usually do is I'll go... I'll, I'll go to the edge of where I crimped it and just crimp it again just to make sure we're good. Now I'm going to take, I don't need all of this wire because uh, it literally just goes on the back of the thing. So, actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and leave it. I am going to leave it all. So these already have the wire stripped off of them. So... Crimp that side, go up just a little bit more. And there's that connection. Now I'm going to take this torch and I'm going to seal up the edges. I like to give them a little bit of a squeeze. Watch your hands, you're gonna burn your hands if you don't pay attention, but that's where we're at. So that's a good connection there. Um, this orange one here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut. Same spot I cut the other one. I believe the orange to be the power. Uh, I didn't look into it. I mean, it's pretty apples to apples right now. I mean, you just, the. <laughs> You can't really mess it up if you're using the color codes. Of course, I guess someone could mess it up, but I'm not gonna, just saying. So I'm gonna go ahead and crimp this side. And when you're doing that, you just need to look and make sure the wire's in there properly and that you're crimping down on the wire to make a metal to metal connection. That's what's important. Uh, that's really the only secret there is to making sure that these crimp connectors will work properly and last a long time. So, put that in there. Before you crimp, always look and make sure it's in the right spot. Crimp slightly over from where you're we at and make sure you get a good crimp on it. And I believe that to be good as well. Go ahead and get the torch back out. Get 
that end all insulated looking good discolors it just slightly but as long as you don't burn the uh, shielding it's good to go so that's good now I'm going to go right into all right these two pieces here go to there so I'm not worried about that the other one that is not the ground which would be this one here is what we're going to worry about right now and I'm going to go ahead and cut that one at about the same spot strip that off I'm going to go ahead and go with this deal Looks like a solid connection to me. All right, you got that one. Now we got this wire here. Make sure you're good to go and then make your crimp. Slightly over. Looks like a good solid connection there torch again now you're all insulated ah hot all right now it's all insulated check your wires make sure there's no damage to the wires or whatever but it's all insulated connections good quality stuff okay so we're back and uh, all I really did since I cut the camera was add a couple of wire ties uh, just to keep well I, I put the wire ties on to not only shorten the wiring up a little bit because it didn't need to be as long as I left it I always like to leave just a little bit more than there should be, but I also am taking better care than just lay, leaving them hang there of my, my connectors. So with these two wire ties, it's going to hold those connectors up and out of the way and keep the wires. If you'll notice, I made, I know you're not zoomed in, I apologize. Um, it keeps, the camera won't, won't uh, focus properly zoomed in. So anyway. I, I got the wires where they're not bending right at the connection. You don't want that. So that's another thing that I always do to make sure that I've got a good connection in there and that, that the connection can't be uh, disturbed is I'll wire tie, tie it in a permanent fashion. So now, no matter what happens in here, how much it flops around, um, the structural integrity or the the connection integrity isn't going to be compromised so that's important to me um, I am going to go ahead and run the brand new switches that I bought um, it's not complicated I'm going to test it before I put the door panel back on so this is me putting the new switch in the new connector Okay, that's that. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and connect the battery and see if she works. All right, battery's connected. Will she work? Unlock. Oh, I got nothing. Hmm. Dome lights on. There we go. I got nothing. All right. 
Now time to troubleshoot. I think the ground is good, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off and sand and we'll be right back. All right guys, after a bunch of trying to figure out what's happening, so I, I called my mechanic uh, after I ended the last clip when I had to pull my connectors back apart because I was, well, I didn't necessarily second guess myself, but I felt like something had to be like locally right where I was working, creating a problem for the locks not to work once I got the wiring harness installed. Now I called my mechanic to ask him, you know, what he thought about this or whatever, and it turns out that the driver's side can absolutely, because they're both connected, they can absolutely uh, be a problem on the driver's side that prevents the passenger side to work. Now on the driver's side, I could get the actuator to lock, but I, w I couldn't get it to unlock. It was all in the wiring. I'm gonna show you that. What a mess this was. I don't know who jerry-rigged this car, but if you're going to do something, you should do it right, because how, how does that make you feel about your time? Like, is your time not valuable? The time you put into something really should reflect your passion for the job and getting it done properly. Um, I know most of you guys, if you're doing work or whatever, you just want to get it done or what, you know, I guess you're trying to save time, but you're really not if you've got to go back over something after you've jerry-rigged it. So I'm not into that. I get it done right. And that goes for my business. That goes for anything I work on. Anyway, I've got it done. Everything is working properly and everything's brand new. I not only uh, switched out the wiring harnesses on both sides, uh, but I also uh, switched out I put brand new switches in. Well, I'll, I'll be installing those. I made sure that they function properly already. Brand new switches, brand new wiring harness, and I put brand new actuators in each door. So, this obviously is the driver's side of my 80 vet. And uh, you can see by this nasty piece right here, this is the old driver's side door actuator. You can see how just time beat that thing is uh, this one actually worked but with that boot being ripped and whatever and i had already ordered new ones this is all done this is ready to go it functions properly uh so i've got brand new switches as you can see these are brand new one for each side and then i put the brand new actuators in i didn't bother filming any of that i was a little frustrated that it wasn't working over there on the other on the passenger side but I went ahead and swapped out the actuator because I had brand new ones like I said uh, these right here these uh, screws are how uh, the actuator mounts to the door there's a bracket just like this one right here that you have to put on yeah I had to drill out the rivets that were here and then I put uh, stainless steel uh, lock washers on there and then unfortunately the only screws I could find here in my garage are these nickel plated ones. I think they'll be fine. I'm not real worried about it. Um, so the new actuators have a rubber boot over the top. So that's awesome. And the fittings and connectors all fit the same. Uh, so now where we're at is that's the driver door. And then as you can see, I went ahead and, um, I cut those connectors off originally that I shot the video on just because I was second guessing myself and I ended up just putting it all back together. So these are nice and done. That harness is brand new. The ground is proper. I ended up getting some sandpaper and sanding that just to make sure I had a good ground. Um, I heard the ground in this is, is a huge factor in whether or not they work properly. So anyway, I wanted to make sure I got a solid ground and it's good and solid and it works properly. Uh, harness brand new. Again, another brand new switch. Um, so everything's nice and new. Um, I will be spraying the switches with my Marine Series salt barrier. That's a great electrical conductor uh, and corrosion preventative. So I'll be spraying that down. Uh, but you'll see the rubber boot right here for the new actuator. Same bolts and uh, lock washers I used on the other side. Again, I had to drill out the rivets and that's what all that crap is. Uh, but now it's just putting this thing back together and uh, we'll be good to go. Uh, I'm not sure why 
what random idiot decided to use masonry screws to uh, attach the arm pull door closer thing, but they did. So anyway, I gotta get that out of there. I'm gonna try to find a new uh, stainless steel bolt. All right, this crazy car is trying to make a fool out of me. However, I know that I wired it up properly and this is where we're at. So anyway, I started putting that door back together. I got that panel on and uh, what the problem was, the whole circuit has to be uh, connected apparently. So everything needs to be connected. So both the switches need to be plugged in and all of that. So anyway, brand new switch here. It's a brand new switch sitting down there. So, lock, unlock. Lock, unlock. That's the driver's side. Now, passenger side, we got lock and unlock, so lock. Unlock, lock, unlock, everything works. Yay! So anyway, I replaced everything, both door actuators, uh, both wiring harnesses. I made sure I had a fantastic ground on the passenger side and I put in brand new switches. So because someone ghetto rigged my armrests with masonry, screws like an idiot and then uh i may or may not have shown you what the wiring harness over here looked like oh so this was the passenger one falling apart like this if we can focus it's just falling apart so that was the passenger one the big problem was the driver's side one i'm not sure what freaking idiot thought that it was okay to put a drywall screw in with some hot glue to try to repair this factory harness piece but i got rid of that trash and i had like i said i had to order brand new armrests because this one's all broken and that's not how i roll so i ordered two brand new armrests from eckler's corvette and it cost me $155 shipped to my door for two of them and a brand new screw set uh, because I didn't have any of the proper screws and I'm a big fan of doing it right the first time. If you're gonna take the time to do something in business and in life, do it right. Take the proper amount of time and try to take as much care as possible to do a good, a great job as good a job as you can do or it's not worth wasting your time, period. You should pay to have somebody else do it if you can't do it right. So that's where we're at. New actuators, new harness, new switches. Everything works properly. Now it's time to put these door panels together and I'm not gonna bother you guys with that. I'm gonna end the video now. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys listening to me babble. Um, if you guys wanna see more videos like this, then let me know. Uh, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up, thumbs down if you hate it, doesn't matter to me. Um, I'm going to keep rocking and rolling whether you love the videos or not. Um, I definitely want to produce content that you guys want to see. So if you got any suggestions for me or whatever, just leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and check out DetailJuice.com for your auto, boat, RV, motorcycle detailing products and check out ResetCharters.com or ResetCharters on Facebook currently because the website's being worked on if you want to take a adventure tour in Tampa Bay or any of the surrounding waters, um, let me know. Thanks again, guys. Have a wonderful day.